In the last couple of days I've been looking at um, Stephen Pinker's writing. More specifically, I've been comparing his writing with uh, George Lakoff's writing, really in respect of a review that Pinker did of Lakoff's book about freedom, a very critical review about, uh, of that book and Lakoff's spirited response. And it got me thinking about the differences in their approach and, of course, similarities. Uh, as I understand it, Pinker comes from kind of old school Chomsky and uh, disembodied, symbolic, objective school of um, cognition in which thought is ultimately kind of computational. The language of thought is something he refers to as mental ease, again borrowing from uh, Chomsky and, and the various translation systems convert that into uh, you know, the language of thought, into the language of speech, so to speak, uh, into various different languages of speech that we have. As I understand it, Lakoff's take on that and the take of um, the whole embodied cognition uh, way of thinking about that really is that he uh, the mind is ultimately embodied there is no symbolic language symbolic co uh, computational language which um, sort of stands outside the affordances of embodiment it all comes down to that in a sense uh, it's very intriguing now it, how those things are laid. I don't know exactly where to go with that. But certainly in terms of just pure physical instantiation, whatever the language of thought is, or the mechanics of thought, to change the metaphor slightly, or the syntax of thought to return the metaphor from whence it came, whatever that is, it must uh, ultimately be instantiated in the physical substrate of the brain. That seems... Um, self-evident. It must be to do with the biochemistry of the brain or the physical structure of the neurons and extra axons and dendrites and all that kind of thing and the, the way that neurotransmitters work. So all that stuff must be ultimately the wetware of thought. So somewhere along the line, um, whatever language the thought is, it must be represented in those terms. So it seems to me that if it is, if, as we can go along with Lakoff, if this um, embodiment is the language of the brain, and also or the language of thought, language of the mind, then um, at some point there must be some kind of a translation. And that translation must be to a kind of physical language, not physical language, but a physical set of mechanisms. And those mechanisms are to do with things like um, diffusion gradients and um, biochemical electronic potentials or something like that, or the, the valency of certain atoms or the quantum fluctuations in microtubules or something like that, whatever it may be. But um, it must be, at some point, uh, a mechanism that's working at that, at that order of logic, not at the order of yes, the sort of, sort of Newtonian bodies walking through space, swinging their arms and, and pacing out the steps along disused railway lines. Um, so whatever, whatever the strength of Lakoff's argument, or conversely, whatever the strength of Pinker's argument is in terms of some kind of mental grammar, whether that be uh, kind of universal disembodied symbolic grammar and whether it be the probably equally universal but uh, the grammar of the body it must ultimately refer to a kind of grammar to do with physics and chemistry perhaps physics and chemistry operates on a very very different set of principles
and the ones that we're used to walking around in.